If you're ready to go from zero to 10K in your coaching business, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to give you three steps to go from zero to 10, 10K in your coaching business, okay? This is something I wish more coaches all find a popular and profitable niche first before I like niche down, Be, uh, get specific, you know, because I was opening my doors like I wanted, like my goal was to be a cardiologist and I only had the title of a general physician. Now, a, a general physician could, will know and study things that a car, that a, a cardiologist knows. However, there's some things that the general physician would not know because they haven't got skin in the game. You know, they haven't gained that extra education, that extra uh, license, that extra knowledge that's only available to a person of that level. Okay, so I had experience. I had experience training people in corporate, training people for free or real might as well been free because it was so low, uh, a low offer, offer. And the mistake I made was I should have, yes, I wanted to find a, a profitable, a popular and profitable niche, but I did not want to niche down too much. Okay, because what I learned was when I allowed myself to go broader, I was able to reach more people. And I started making money in my business. In other words, the first step in making going from zero to 10K would be to be open to testing your ideal audience before niching down before niching down. That way it will allow you to do what? To reach more people, to make money so that you will take that time to test your audience. Because just because you have this training and you have this um, experience in this sector doesn't mean that audience will gravitate to you in this realm. So to make this video short, I'm good. I'm giving you two more, right? The, the next step is learn that it is a numbers game. It's a number game out here. So I used to think that being a coach and reaching $10,000 in my business, in my coaching business was a popularity uh, contest to opt in. I was wrong. What I needed, what I needed to learn was the numbers. I needed the numbers to build my business. I also not only needed to know what numbers I needed to build my business, I needed to understand the effects of the numbers on my business. Because when you understand and know the numbers, you're able to operate more clearly because you know how many people you need to reach on average to reach your goal. So if your goal is 10,000, you know that this, this formula, you know what formula you need to put on repeat to reach that goal. The third thing, the third thing I wish somebody had told me, it would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of money. And I'm going to give you this. I had to learn how to leverage my superpower. And my superpower is I'm a storyteller and my personality. Now, you may or may not call yourself a storyteller, but we all have a story. The story is what we tell people that uh, attracts them to. It could be your own personal story. It could be the way you affect your clients, that's a story. You will find that there's a saying that you will catch more flies with honey than vinegar. 
So you have to make it sweet necessarily to entertain the people, to entertain the people. Of course, nobody wants to listen to a boring story. OK, but it's important that you show your personality and you tell your story. So I'm going to tell you all a story because I told you all I'm a storyteller. So I was watching this show. Now, this is a rerun. I was watching a show called In the Neighborhood. And this is a story. This is a show that has Cedric the Entertainer. So Cedric the Entertainer, he plays a character called Calvin Butler. He lives in a black community. Next door to him is David Johnson, right? And David Johnson is white. He's Caucasian. So Dave decided he was going to run for city council because he had ideas to improve the area or his neighborhood to help the city citizens of that community, of that city. So just to let you know, if you watch this show, I'm about to give you a spoiler alert. I'm about to tell y'all some tidbits that happened in the story. But it's a good story. It's a good show. You still should watch it. So Dave ended up, at the end of the show, he found him, he finally found the confidence to show his personality and tell his story concerning the city. And his story was what he had to offer and why he felt these were important to the, the citizens of this particular neighborhood. He lost the campaign. I believe he lost it because it took him so long to find the confidence and showing who he was and what he had to offer. He wasn't putting his best foot forward because when he was with the people and how I know, because he used a different approach. Like there was another episode where he, were, he was going to the barbershop. Nobody knew him. He didn't feel the stress of a campaign. So he was able to feel confident in who he was. So he was himself. He told stories that was unique to him at the barbershop. So what happened there is he was able to build like, know, and trust. People liked him so much. They became friends with him. They began asking him for advice. What does that have to do with your business? So we're in the people business. What I learned, and this is step three. Once I learned to act, to leverage my superpower, my personality, or my story, I was able to go on long form and short form platform to reach the people who I am meant to serve. The the fun, the education, the empowering is not finished yet, folks. You want to make sure if you have not subscribed and click the notification bell, you subscribe and click the notification bell. Because next, I'm going to give you three mistakes that you need to quit making when creating your coaching program.